friends, welcome to my channel. I'm in London right now shooting literary vlogs for all my students, taking you all to various authors' houses and places like Globe Theatre with an aim to help you understand English literature in a more practical and engaging way. But this is not just a usual vlog. In fact, this video is going to be an extra special video wherein from the streets of London, I'm going to talk about and give you a detailed review of UGC NET Paper 1 and Paper 2 that happened on March 1st, 2023. Before we move ahead, let me tell you all the sources from where I have gathered the information that I'm going to share in this video. I have spoken not just to my online course students, but I've also spoken to students who are connected to me on WhatsApp and all other social media platforms. And in the last two days, you will not believe that I've spoken to more than 350 students over call and WhatsApp. By the way, guys, we are India's largest YouTube channel right now in the field of English literature, having maximum number of subscribers. We are close to hitting 6 lakh subscribers in just a few days. And hence, I understand that it is a big responsibility of my channel to do justice to each and every one of you who eagerly wait for my videos by providing you authentic content that you can trust with closed eyes. So here I am with a detailed and authentic video of both Shift 1 and Shift 2 papers of UGC NET English exam. Let me quickly take you through all the topics that we are going to cover in today's topic. I'm going to share six things with you. First, I'm going to share my critical insights of what kind of questions were asked in paper one. Second, I'm going to talk about the paper pattern of UGC NET paper one. Third, we'll do a discussion on questions asked in Paper 2 English. Fourth, I'm going to talk about UGC NET Paper 2 pattern and discuss how was this paper different or similar to the previous year papers. Fifth, I'm going to throw some light on the expected cutoff that I feel will come after looking at and analyzing the papers. And lastly, we will be discussing preparation strategy for the upcoming June exam. But before we move forward, I would just like to give you a small message. If you are looking for March 1st UGC NET question papers, or if you want to grab your hands on the answer key, then I have a great news for you. Grab a pen and paper and write down the number displayed on your screen right now. This is the WhatsApp number of my team. You just have to drop a WhatsApp message to them saying that you are a UGC NET English aspirant and my team is going to provide you with the question papers as well as answer keys. Plus, once we receive your message, we are also going to keep you notified about all the important UGC NET examination details, including details like e uh, opening of June application form, result, correction window and whatnot. So to begin with, let's quickly talk about questions that were asked in UGC NET Paper 1. As always, around five questions were asked from each unit of Paper 1. Teaching aptitude was pretty simple. Easy questions like evaluation methods and characteristics of a good student were asked. Moving ahead to research aptitude, they asked a question related to focus group. For those of you who might not know, this question is from the topic Methods and Tools of Research. From ICT, there were questions related to virus and few other terminologies related to computers. From People and Environment, they focused majorly on pollution this time. And from Higher Education Sector, questions related to state universities were asked. Talking of the practical portion, from Mathematical Reasoning, questions were from topics like direction, alphabet series, and blood relation. All of them were pretty easy. From logical reasoning, questions came from square of opposition and informal fallacy. And last but not the least, from DIA or data interpretation, this time the questions that came were from percentage and ratio. Students also said that DIA was pretty simple this time. 
the overall difficulty level of UGC Net Paper 1 was moderate in nature. As far as the trend is concerned, I did not find any major difference in the way paper was set out. It was pretty similar to the past year question papers of UGC Net. Anyone who knew the syllabus well can easily get 40 questions correct out of 50. To any normal student who is sitting for UGC Net for the first time, the syllabus of Paper 1 seems to be pretty huge. Most students flunk in UGC Net Paper 1 because either they give too much time to one unit because of which they have to leave other units or they skip important topics from which repeatedly questions are asked. We make the preparation journey of such students simple with our online video course for UGC Net Paper 1, where we cover all important topics of each unit in just 20 animated lectures. So in total, we give you 200 lectures in which we cover all the 10 units. We have made these lectures after evaluating the past year papers and we exactly know which topics are important and which topics can be skipped. We were very, very happy to find out from our online course students that all the topics from which questions were asked this time in UGC Net Paper 1 were directly covered in our online video course. Now let's jump and look at the questions that came in UGC Net Paper 2 English Literature. All the calls that I've had with my students confirmed one thing. The question paper was filled with British writers. Multiple questions were asked from Shakespeare, Thomas Hayward, Alexander Pope, Charles Dickens, Dr. Samuel Johnson, T.S. Eliot and the literary giants. I always tell my students that British literature is the key pillar on which the success of your UGC net examination depends. And that's the reason why I'm away from my country right now, shivering in this temperature in London just to make British literature more easy for you through my vlog series. I know the importance of British literature in UGC net question papers and taking you to literary places like Globe Theatre, Charles Dickens House, Lake Districts will expand your understanding of these writers to new levels. What you see behind me right now is the very beautiful statue of Robert Burns, the famous Scottish poet. In spite of the important role British literature plays in UGC Net, no student can clear UGC Net without focusing on literatures of other countries, namely American, post-colonial, European and world literature. This time too, they have asked number of questions from literatures of these countries. From Indian literature, there were questions on Amitabh Ghosh, Bunking Chandra Chatterjee, Mulk Rajanand, Toru Dutt, and the famous playwright Vijay Tendulkar. Coming to the post-colonial writers, there were questions from V.S. Naipaul, South African writer Nadim Godmer, Ben Okri's Famish Road, and Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Moving on, let's talk about American literature. Students reported that Frederick Douglass and John Steenbeck were two American writers from which questions were asked this time. What you see behind me right now is the famous Kit Kat Club Theatre named after the famous Kit Kat Club. If you are preparing for June 2023 attempt, let me know in the comment section below all the important writers associated with the Kit Kat Club. Before we talk about paper 2, did you notice where I am sitting right now? It is a bench come um, Oscar Wilde Memorial, famously known as A Conversation with Oscar Wilde, situated at the Charing Cross Station. Oscar Wilde was one of the greatest poets and authors of the 19th century. Although born and raised as an Irishman, he spent a lot of his life in London. And of course, many of his plays were first staged here in this city. Unveiled by the actor Stephen Fry in, on the 98th death anniversary of Oscar Wilde, this piece consists of a grey night block which is coffin shaped, having bronze head and shoulders of Oscar peering out. At the tail, you will find a quote from his 1892 play Lady Windermere's Fan, which is probably one of his most memorable and apt quotes. And I quote, 
We are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. By the way, if you haven't watched my previous vlogs on Sherlock Holmes Museum, Globe Theatre, British Library, where I'm covering literary places in London, then please check those videos on my channel right now. Just like this Oscar Wilde statue that we covered, I'm covering many other literary locations related to British writers. It's an initiative taken by me to make UGC Net English Prep fun and easy for you by practically showing you places where these writers were born and where they wrote famous works, I'm trying to help you get a feel of the time when these writers were writing. For clearing exams like UGC Net, conceptual understanding is must. And through these vlogs, I'm trying to solidify conceptual understanding of literature and take you away from the rote learning method where you just sit and mug up information. Making such videos in a new country in this freezing temperature is actually a very hard task. And if you like this initiative of mine, I would really appreciate if you can like my vlogs, share it with other fellow aspirants and also comment your feelings. It takes me days to research about these places and shoot these vlogs. And I would be very, very happy to know from you in the comments below if these blogs are proving helpful in your preparation journey. Coming back to the detailed analysis of UGC Net Paper 2, students also reported that the paper was filled with match the following questions. Now, they have asked you uh, to match works with their writers or characters with their novels. Now, these kind of questions are the simplest ones, but most of the students fail to get these questions right. But why? Because in order to clear UGC NET exam, a student has to read about 1200 novels, plays and poems. And when you read so many authors and their works, all the characters and the details get mixed up in your head. Now, we identified this problem long back and it motivated us to launch our online video course where students get animated video lectures for each of these writers and their works. The entire novel is explained by me using rich animation and 3D graphics, which makes it look like a movie. All our course students who watch these lectures found that solving match the following questions in the UGC net exam was just a cakewalk for them. Theory and criticism might appear to be a topic that gives a mini heart attack to all the net aspirants, yet it is undoubtedly a portion that holds a very important role in the UGC net question paper. This time they have asked questions from new criticism, structuralism, deconstruction, as well as psychoanalytical school of criticism. Theorists like Mikhail Bhaktin, Jack Lacan were there in the paper along with terms like aphoria and verbal IQ. Now that we have discussed the questions that came in UGC net paper 2, it's time to see if this time's question paper was different from the past year's UGC net paper 2. In my opinion, there were a few similarities and a few differences. As far as the similarities are concerned, just like past years, even this time, 70% paper was from British literature, literary theory and literary criticism. As far as differences are concerned, this time they kind of neglected European writers and topics like English in India and language and pedagogy. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What was the difficulty level of the paper? Now this is a very subjective question. For a well-prepared student who knows the syllabus well, it was a pretty easy paper. But for someone who has just referred to a few guidebooks and have gone through their BA MA paper, the question paper might look like a nightmare. Now, by the way, what you see behind me is a statue of William Tyndale. If you know, this writer William Tyndale was the first person who translated Bible into English. And this is a beautiful uh, plaque which talks about William Tyndale and his contribution to the world of literature. Now you might ask, Arpita, how can you say that the paper was super easy with so much confidence? Friends, I can say this 
because if you look at the list of writers that we cover in our online course for UGC Net English, you can very well point out that not even a single question came from a topic or a writer which was not a part of our online course syllabus. You can right now go to the website arpadakarva.com and check out the detailed list of writers which is displayed free of cost on the website. The issue, as I always say, is that students really don't know the real syllabus of UGC Net, and that's the reason why they find paper tough. Let me tell you something very important. This time, the UGC Net paper 2 wasn't tough. It was you who wasn't prepared well. I'm telling you this based on the experience of my online course students. All of them unanimously had reported that the paper was like a cakewalk for them. And it was because they invested time and energy to watch all my video lectures. In our online course, we have divided the entire syllabus of UGC Net in 13 modules, starting from British literature, American, post-colonial, European, Indian, all the way to literary theory, criticism and literary movements. Do you know that just in British literature, there are 350 writers that we cover in our online course. Any student who has prepared detailed notes on all these writers can never get any of these questions wrong in the exam paper. So after such a long discussion, I'm sure that you all must be waiting for me to answer the big question. What will be the cutoff this time? The best way to determine the cutoff of the paper is by knowing the difficulty level of the paper. Based on the past 10 years data, we can very well conclude that every time the paper was easy, the cutoff was really high, as high as 75%. And each time the paper was difficult, the cutoff was really low, as low as 50%. Cutoff and difficulty level of the paper has an inversely proportional relationship in case of UGC net exam. Based on the feedback that I've received from students, I can conclude that the paper was easy this time. And so, as for my analysis, the net cutoff would be somewhere around 68% and the JRF cutoff would be 73% for the general category students. Now that we are at the end of today's video, I would like to discuss the last topic which centers around the question that most students ask me. Arpita, now that we have given the UGC Net English exam, what next? See friends, step one will be to estimate your paper and see whether you qualify the cutoff or not. If you think you qualify the cutoff, then pat your back and sit and relax till the time results are out. If you find that your score is either at the borderline or is lower than the cutoff, then it's time for you to brace yourself up and start preparing for the next exam that is going to happen in June. By the way, I've also made a small video on what I have to say to students who felt that their exam did not go well or whose exam wasn't as good as they thought it should have been or those who feel disheartened and are feeling low after the exam. There's a small video for each one of you out there. I request you to kindly pause this video go to the description section and click on the YouTube link of my exam special message video and watch it right now. So the only advice that I would want to give to anyone who feels that they will not clear the exam this time is that please don't sulk. It's rather time for you to prepare yourself for the upcoming June attempt. Look at the March attempt as a way through which you got to know your weak areas and utilize the next three months to prepare hard. I would also advise you to download the detailed list of writers that is available free of cost on our website arpitakarva.com. Mark all the writers and topics that you haven't studied yet and start making their notes. Or you can even join India's only online course that offers animated lectures covering all important novels, plays and poems related to English literature. If you have any questions, any doubts, then feel free to reach out on WhatsApp number displayed on the screen 797 and me and my team will be more than happy to assist you. 
You can also check demo animated lectures from our video course on our website courses.arpitakarva.com. So that's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.